Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to my daily, my fifth daily, number five, November the 28th, 2017. It's a Tuesday and uh, today, finding out on Twitter that what's trending today, the Grammys. The Grammy nominations have been made and uh, oh, the Twitterverse is all excited about all the nominees. But I thought I'd talk to you today about the Grammys you don't know. Um, because I'm going to suggest and I'm going to surmise that um, most of you are under 40 uh, out there. Most of you um, that are watching me, although a number of you are older. I even have fans that are 8 years old. Did you know that? I have 8 year old fans that, that follow me. Thank you very much. Um, Oh, by the way, if you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up and send me a comment. Tell me how I'm doing. Give me suggestions. Uh, tell me how good I am. Yeah, please. Um, because uh, the more interaction I have with you out there and the more subscribers I get, the more YouTube will promote my channel. And the more it promotes my channel, the higher my views get. And the higher my views get, I actually make money <laughs> from my advertising. It, it's pennies. Uh, per video, not even pennies a video, but everything counts. Okay, so anyway, let's let's get back to the story. The Grammys. Today it's all about the Grammys. Well, I want to talk to you about the Grammys from uh, a few years ago. Uh, most of you won't know this story, so that's what I'm going to tell you. Um, in uh, 1964, uh, the Beatles uh, hit the stage <clears throat> on the Ed Sullivan Theater on the Ed Sullivan Show and became known across the United States. Big time. They were already massively popular in England, <clears throat> in the United Kingdom, and they were quite popular in Europe now. They already had a number one record, if not more than one number one record in Britain already. Nothing in the United States. But when they came to Ed Sullivan, they had a number one single already on the charts, and within, I think, a week of being in the US or two, they had, in 1964, five records in the top five at the same time on the top 100 countdown. Over the history of the Beatles as a, as a group, as far as America is concerned, this would be from about, say, I'm looking at some notes here, so forgive me, uh, from about uh, January 64 until May 1970, the Beatles had a total of 45 songs that were uh, top 40 hits. 45. Uh, 31 of those became top 10 hits. 31 out of 45 became top 10s. And out of the 31 that became top 10s, 20 became number one songs. 20. Um, in 1964, the year that they broke into the big time in the United States, they had 19 songs in the top 40 on the charts in 1964. And they had five number one hits, five number ones in 1964. Uh, over the lifetime of the Beatles, from again, from 65 to, or 64 to 70, the Grammys awarded the Beatles five Grammys. That's it. Five Grammys to the greatest band of all time, number one selling artists, influenced everybody, left, right, and center, made hundreds of, of, of stars uh, from just being the Beatles. I mean, Billy Joel, um, uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, uh, uh, you, name, you name gazillions of groups uh, out there, individual artists who became artists because of the Beatles. And the Grammys saw fit in the, uh, in the uh, six years that they dominated music, they were given five Grammys. My respect for the Grammys, not so much. Uh, I've never forgotten. I'm, you know, just an old guy. I don't forget that sort of stuff, and I don't forgive him for it. Um, today, uh, they might well be hip and cool and with it and on the scene and everything else. They're run by totally different people, of course. They're run by the generation that runs music today. But back in the 60s, there was such a bias against uh, pop stars, uh, um, all kinds of genres, unless you were a Hollywood producer, producing for Broadway, uh, you know, uh, orchestra music, uh, the Grammys, you, you didn't have a chance. 
And yet, uh, you know, those in the music business always viewed the Grammys as the gold standard of awards. Hmm. One other thing about the Grammys. Uh, you ever heard of a group called the Wrecking Crew? Most of you haven't heard about the group called the Wrecking Crew. Uh, but let me tell you a little secret about this group. Uh, they won seven Grammys in a row for Record of the Year. You have never heard of them. Record of the Year, seven years in a row. The Wrecking Crew. Who are the Wrecking Crew? A bunch of studio musicians in Los Angeles that were working with uh, people like Phil Spector, uh, working with um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the people like uh, the Beach Boys, the Monkees, David Cassidy, uh, uh, artists of, of, of any renown uh, were connected to the Wrecking Crew. The Wrecking Crew um, were responsible for recording the music in studio for Herb Alpert, at least, at least six albums. Uh, the Beach Boys, The Crystals, Jan and Dean, The Ronettes, uh, Dean Martin, Everybody Loves Somebody. His number one hit was recorded by the musicians, The Wrecking Crew, uh, because it was a throw-in song at the last minute to fill out an album that he was doing. They didn't know what to... They needed one more song, and they had this Everybody Loves Somebody thing lying around, and Martin wasn't sure. His, his producer said, well, let, let's just give it a try. Let's get these guys in here, The Wrecking Crew guys. We can whip this off in an hour. They did. Number one hit for Dean Martin is one of his most famous songs. The Righteous Brothers, uh, You Lost That Loving Feeling, the most played song on the history of radio. You Lost That Love and Feeling by The Righteous Brothers. The Wrecking Crew were the musicians for that song. That's The Wrecking Crew. Um, one of the members was uh, Glenn Campbell. Another one was Leon Russell. He just passed away this past year. Um, Carol Kay, Tommy Tedesco, Hal Blaine, to name a few other people, most of which you, you don't know. You don't know who these people are. A uh, couple more uh, uh, artists, uh, Johnny Rivers, The Birds, Gary Lewis and the Playboys, The Mamas and the Papas. Heard of them? Unbelievable. Barry McGuire, Sonny and Cher. <laughs> Sonny and Cher. And Cher is a solo artist as well, by the way. Uh, who else? Ike and Tina Turner, Simon and Garfunkel, uh, Frank Sinatra and Nancy Sinatra. Both used the Wrecking Crew. Uh, Frank Sinatra used them for Strangers in the Night, number one hit. Nancy Sinatra used them for These Boots Are Made for Walking, number one hit. The Association, The Fifth Dimension. Uh, Frank and Nancy Sinatra, Something Stupid, number one hit. Gary Puckett and the Union Gap, Paul Revere and the Raiders. I, much, I once met Paul Revere. That's a story for another day. The Grassroots, Glenn Campbell, of course. Uh, he went from the session musician with the Wrecking Crew to become a solo artist in his own right. He had his own television show. He was surrounded by unbelievable musicians when he played live. But when it was time for Glenn Campbell to make an album, what did he do? Back to Los Angeles, to the studio, grab the kids from the Wrecking Crew, and make an album in like a couple of days with the Wrecking Crew and then back on the road with his musicians playing all the songs they just recorded with the Wrecking Crew. He had to teach his musicians how to play how the Wrecking, how the wrecking Crew played it for him. That's how good these guys were. Unbelievable. Uh, anyone else here? Tommy Rowe, The Carpenters, Neil Diamond, Mark Lindsay, The Partridge Family, uh, Share on Her Own, as I said, The Grassroots, <laughs> I'm just reading this list off. Unbelievable. Johnny Rivers, if I've, if I've already mentioned a few, I apologize. Captain and Tennille. Uh, so this is just a, a, a smattering of some of the artists that these guys played for, and they knocked off number one hits like you wouldn't believe. If, if it was the 60s or the 70s, you knew who the Wrecking Crew was, but the Grammys weren't going to tell you that. I don't know if the Grammys have ever honored the Wrecking Crew. I, I don't know if they've ever, ever honored them. Uh, you know what? I don't care. Um, the Grammys, to me, uh, just don't have legitimacy in a, in a serious way for me. Um, they blew it back in the 60s when they ignored the, the musicians that were making music. And frankly, the musicians that carried the music industry and made it possible for uh, art, other uh, uh, um, entities to survive were groups like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and others. They had the multi-million selling albums. And it was their dollars that kept the music business rolling right along and it allowed the Grammys to keep ignoring them 
and just kind of shunt them away over to the side. It's not serious music. We're not going to pay attention to it. Oh, how things changed over time. But man, it was frustrating as a kid, as a teenager in the 60s to go through that, to be just snubbed by the establishment uh, of the Grammys. It was really, really bad. Anyway, that's that. another story another day. Anyway, uh, that's my story for today. It's my fifth daily. Uh, a little bit of music history for you. Some of it frustrating, some of it satisfying. Uh, I hope you have a great day today. I will bring out my sixth daily tomorrow. Um, and if you are a fan of the channel, I hope you are, please subscribe. Uh, give me a thumbs up on any of my videos. Check all my videos out. I've got all kinds of videos going right now. And uh, we'll see you next time on uh, Traveling with Bruce. Take care.